Just as I saw this, the room went dark. The camera screens turned off, and the power doors opened. The power was out. I ran out the left door, turning the flashlight on. The bunny wasn't anywhere in sight, to my luck. As I ran down the hall, I slipped in something on the floor. I fell hard on my knee. I felt like I broke it. I moaned in pain, but tried my hardest not to scream. I felt the substance that I slipped in with my fingers. I smelled it. It was blood. I was laying in a big puddle of blood. I immediately assumed it was the blood of Alex and almost let out a cry of pain and sickness. I tried to get on my feet, but the pain in my knee was unbearable. I started to crawl down the hall with blood all over my arms and legs. I didn't know where to go or how to escape. They would surely catch me now. My luck seemed to have run out because I heard heavy footsteps coming fast down the hall. I had to act quickly, but I didn't know what to do. I looked around me and found a door. I didn't care what room it led to, I just had to get out of the hallway. The footsteps were getting closer. I shut the flashlight and managed to reach the doorknob, pushing the door open. I crawled into the room and pulled the door shut as quickly and quietly as I could. My knee wasn't hurting too bad anymore, but I didn't want to take the chance of putting pressure on it. Crawling was quieter anyway. As I crawled through the pitch black hallways, banging into walls, I noticed that almost all of the floors in these hallways were sticky. The stickiness caused my skin to make a peeling sound off the floor each time I lifted my hands or legs. I didn't think too deep into the stickiness or anything for that matter. I was too focused on getting out of there and finding Alex. As I crawled down the hall, I noticed moonlight shining in through a window in a room up ahead. I hoped the window would be low enough and big enough for me to reach and fit through. I crawled to the doorway, but the sight of two big glowing eyes stopped me. The eyes were fixed on mine, even in the dark. I turned on the flashlight and shined it at the figure. It was Foxy. He looked like a broken, unfinished animatronic with pieces missing altogether. His legs didn't even seem to be finished, as his robotic legs were not covered up by plastic fur, and his feet were just two pieces of metal. He raised his hook hand and started moving quickly towards me. I managed to get up on my feet, ignoring the pain on my knee. I held up the crowbar ready to swing it like a baseball bat. As soon as the robot got close enough, I swung the crowbar to hit his robotic leg, causing him to fall to the floor. I took this opportunity to smash his robotic head numerous times with the crowbar, causing gears to fly out of its face. The eyes were still glowing, fixed on me, but his legs seemed broken, and that was enough to stop him from getting me. I hopped closer to the window. The other robots no doubt heard what just happened, so I had to hurry. By my count, only two people died trapped at Freddy's. You had to trust me there. One of the victims was a, you know, the guy, being a child, and the other victim was an animatronic, Foxy, if you let me use it, which gives us this very even pie chart. Obviously. I mean, there are only two deaths, so... It's an even pie chart, so... Moving on. We've seen this exact number twice before on this channel with both Who Killed Cinema and Day One. However, I do not like Day One, so... Uh, yeah. Nothing else I have to say, so I'll just move on. With a runtime of 27 minutes, we had a kill on average about technically every 13 and a half minutes. Although they, they were like close together, so I'm not sure if this is correct. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw Award for the coolest kill to Foxy, because it's the most on screen out of the entire video. And if you let, at least just let me have this for once, Dull Machete for Lamest Kill, by default, will go to Alex, since it happens off screen, we don't get to see a body, and all we hear is just a pile of blood, which is presumably of his.